off on here. Dang it, I thought I was tall enough. Hang on, let me adjust my camera a little bit so you guys can see me talking. Thought I had it right, guys. Move it backwards a little bit. Okay. Well, if my head's cut off, you don't need to see me. You're not here to watch me anyways. Okay, I'm going to come down here and talk to you guys for a few minutes. Um, so my head's going to be cut off on this video, but that's okay because you guys aren't here to watch me. You guys are here to watch me use the new Dixie Bell paint wood graining tool. And I'll be talking in the background. You guys will see my hands, but um, I'm just going to let my head be cut off. So hi, everyone. Thank you guys for coming on to watch me. So I'm going to come behind to my piece of wood here. Um, so my name is Brandy, and I am a Dixie Bell paint brand ambassador. And my job is basically to come on and um, teach you guys, give you guys some inspiration for how to use the Dixie Bell paint products. Um, but I was thinking also, you know, my job is to play around and make the mistakes so you guys don't have to. So that's kind of what tonight is all about. It's all about a mistake I made um, and solutions I found and what ended up working out for me that I can share with you guys and save you guys the time of having to figure that out for yourselves. Hi, everyone. Um, so usually my husband, Sean, is here with me to help with my camera work and answer questions. But I'm on an hour early this week. Next week I'll be back at my regular time, which is 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, so he's not here tonight because we're in California and he's still at work. So, raining. Uh, what? It's raining? It's hotter than heck here. I have my air conditioner on tonight. I got an air conditioner in my workspace, you guys. Hi, Carrie Beth. Um, so tonight I posted on my page earlier today a set of nightstands and the set of nightstands when I got them had granite tops on them and granite tops at one time were considered, you know, a beautiful high end thing. They were high end nightstands. They're uh, Michael Amini, which is a nice furniture brand, but they had one of them had cracked and the corner fell off of it. So I knew when I brought them home that they were going to need new tops. So what I did to um, replace those tops is I literally took them apart. So we had to look at the construction of the nightstands and all of them are gonna be different. But for that set, it meant um, taking the drawers out, taking the backs of them off, and they were screwed in from underneath with a, with a plywood backing under the stone. So once we unscrewed those screws, those stone tops lifted off with the wood. That was the set I was working on. Look at the construction of your piece. Um, take the drawers out, but usually they will be um, nailed or stapled or screwed in from underneath. Um, if it's just a plain uh, stone top that doesn't have any wood under it, then you can just you can just break it off. Um, are you full real? Yeah, you like that? I got you guys, huh? So I'm gonna come back to my piece of wood. And like I said, unfortunately my head is cut off. I thought I had gotten my camera up tall enough. Let me see if I can get it taller so I won't be cut off. Oh, there we go. Hey, look at that, Brandy. So I'm gonna come back here to my piece of wood and we're gonna start talking about this. Um, so since I'm over here and I don't have help with my questions, I'm gonna pull you guys up on my laptop really quick. and try to read questions from my laptop. So, what I did to replace those tops, once I had removed them, um, I knew I wanted to put a piece of wood on them. So, and there I am. You guys pop on and let me know where you're watching from. Let me know you can see and hear me okay. And I got my comments up. Yay for me. Thank you guys so much for sharing. Okay, so once I popped those stone tops on, and it could be, um, you know, I have another set of nightstands in my works, in my storage, which is what these are actually going to be for. And those tops aren't stone, but they're a, um, you know, composite wood that has gotten wet at some point and has warped. So this would also be an option if you've got a top that needs to be replaced because of warping. So what we did, um, I went to Lowe's and our Lowe's locally sells these huge planks of pine and they come in a plastic wrapping, which I've got over here. 
So it comes all wrapped in plastic. I've already taken that off. It looks like this when you get it. It's over in the um, in the lumber in the millwork section. So that's where we found these. And this one is 72 inches long. They come in um, a couple different measurements. So this one's 72 inches long and it's 20 inches deep. They also come in a 24 inch deep depth. But for the um, side tables I'm gonna be putting these on, this 24 inch depth works for those. Or I'm sorry, the 20 inch depth works for those. So I'm using the smaller size on this one. Um, they come with this label on them here. So she's making like a baby cradle out of them. But there's a whole bunch of things you can use these, these pine tops for. Um, I know some hardware stores will actually cut lumber for you, some will not. So when you pick this up from the aisle, you can ask one of the staff people at your hardware store if they will cut it to the size that you need. Um, we ended up cutting these at home. So I started out with a 72 inch long piece of pine. And, um, and I'm gonna show you what I did from there. So my face is gonna disappear. Hi, Deborah. Sean is not here with me tonight, you guys, and I'm missing him so much. Every time he's not here, I realize how much I value his help. Okay, so this first part over here is what it looks like when you first get it. It's a little bit rough, and so all I did with this is I ran my sander over it, just my random orbital sander, with a 120 grit sandpaper. And that just takes it down, I mean, it's not super rough, it's just a you know, rough enough that it's not ready to stain. So I took down the grit in the wood with a 120 grit sandpaper on my random orbital sander. Hi guys. Okay, so once this was fairly smooth, I took my Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain. Voodoo Gel Stain comes in a variety of colors. We're gonna use a whole bunch of them tonight. This one's called Up and Smoke. So Up and Smoke is their gray Voodoo Gel Stain. So um, I love the Voodoo's because number one, my favorite thing about them is these, the bottles they come in. It's super easy to apply these. These are a water-based gel stain. They don't have any odor to them like, a, like an oil-based gel stain. Um, you can use these over the top of an existing finish or on raw wood as we're gonna be using it tonight. Um, you guys, if you already have a surface that's not raw wood, for example, you can also do this with some Dixieville paint, too. So you could take paint and, um, and apply that, and I'll, I'll tell you the paint way, too. So for this gray color, if you were going to be using paint, I would say this is closest to Hurricane Gray. If you're going over an existing finish and, and um, want to use paint for this instead. So all I did on the raw wood, there's nothing on here, is I'm just gonna squirt out enough to get some good coverage. And this is why I like this Voodoo Gel Stain because I will literally streak this on for a variety of looks. Um, and it comes right in that bottle, so you can just squeeze it on just as it is. So then I'm gonna take my Dixie Belle brush in a mini, and I'm gonna spread this out. I'm just get, trying to get an even coat on here. My mini is a little bit damp, so it's helping my voodoo spread just that much easier. I'm gonna spread it with the grain of the wood. If you guys have any questions, pop on and let me know what they are. I'll try to answer questions as best as I can while I'm talking. So I'm just gonna spread this coat out. So this actually happened, uh, this look came up, came up by an accident. And that was kind of what I was mentioning at the beginning of the video that the brand ambassadors are here to make the mistakes, play around with the products, and then show you what we learn from them. And this was a mistake for me. I, I guess not a mistake, it just was a process that I had to keep fixing and fixing until I got a look that I liked. So we'll call it a happy accident. You need the white, Deborah. The white is amazing. Do you find it's a little hairy after you sand? Um, it's fairly smooth. So pine is a very, very soft wood. It's also a very cheap wood. So these, this was about $30 for this entire plank here, which is um, 72 inches long. So I could get a dresser top out of this for most size dressers. In this case, I'll get two nightstand tops out of this one piece I'm working on here, which is kind of where I've taped it off. I measured the size I would need for my nightstand and then I taped it off. 
so that I could show you the different steps in the process. Um, so once I have a fairly even coverage, I just took an old rag, which in this case is a sock, and I'm gonna just wipe that into the wood. I don't want, um, you can see with the Voodoo's, you can get fairly opaque coverage, which is here, it's a little bit thicker. I actually want this on pretty thin. I don't wanna lose the wood grain of the pine because I'm gonna use that to work together with my graining tool. So I want a fairly thin coat of the Voodoo gel stain. So once I had it on and even, I wiped it back as much as that wood would give me back, I took it. Um, so Deborah mentioned a minute ago about the new white Voodoo gel stain. Some of the products we're using tonight are brand new. Dixieville just did a brand new release of products, including Moonshine Metallics, which are five metallic colors. Um, they released two new Voodoo gel stains. One of them is White Magic, which is a white Voodoo gel stain, and then the wood graining tool that we're going to be using tonight. Let me get mine out. Okay, so the wood graining tool, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I never care for a wood graining tool look. I think it looks artificial. Um, I've had one for a long time. It was a cheap one, not, not very nice. And you guys can look back at my work and notice like I, I never used it. I never used it. So when Dixie Bell came out with a wood grading tool, um, I wanted to play around with it and see if I could come up with a look with it. So that's kind of how this came about. Um, I had taken this pint and I stained it gray and I thought, oh, I kind of want like a grayed wood look. I'll stain it gray. But you guys can see here, this is kind of, it's pretty, but it's just very blah. Like it was missing something, it was kind of ordinary. So I was like, shoot, what am I gonna do? I need to spice this up a little bit. My pieces were really exotic and had a lot of detail. So just a plain, you know, gray pine, it just didn't look like enough. So um, I got out my grading tool, again, which I've never used before. I owned a cheap one. I don't, I, I don't care for the look of a grading tool. But I feel like this look I'm doing tonight, I ended up figuring out a way to get a look that I liked out of it that looked authentic. And that made a big difference to how I feel about the grading tool now. So let's see. Ah, you're just catching me for the first time live. You need the bronze metallic. Um, Let's see. Okay. Yeah, so so you can raise the grain pine. You can raise the grain. And actually, the tables I did, it raised the grain a little bit. But if you think about real authentic barn wood, um, it has a raised grain. Once you let wood sit out and get moisture into it, the grain does raise. So I liked that the, the grain in the pine raised a little bit. It made it more authentic to what a... Um, old barn wood would feel like. Um, Hannah, if the, if the video is frozen, go ahead and go out and go back in again and that should bring the picture back for you guys. Do the Moonshine products have translucent property? So you should see the paint beneath. They are a bit translucent and the, the answer to that is you can either put a light color underneath the metallics or you can layer the metallics on themselves. So if you just do two or three coats of metallic, you will get you will get opaque coverage. But if you want them to be a little bit translucent, you can use them almost like a glaze or a wash just to give a little shimmer over your existing paint color. So um, being a little translucent gives you a few options for your look. Okay, so once I have my, um, I have my up and smoke voodoo on this side here, I took and I sealed it with Dixie Belle Gator Hide. I had sealed mine because I thought this was gonna be my final look. I thought, okay, I'm just gonna stain these tops gray and they'll be good. So I sealed it with some um, Gator Hide and I'll tell you in a minute why this ended up being helpful. So I sealed my entire piece with Dixie Belle Gator Hide. Um, you can see that Voodoo soaks into the wood and actually dries pretty quickly. I'm able to brush this top coat on right afterwards without picking any of it up. It's absorbed into my wood completely. So 
So you could create your own barn door. Oh my gosh, yes, how cute would that be? Um, another option to this single piece of pine is you can buy um, pine or cedar fence boards, which come in a um, two by six or a two by eight size, and you could nail them together, or you could even get tongue and groove pine. If you wanted like a tongue and groove look, that would be cute too. So this is just one option to get the pine in this long plank. But if you go over to the lumber section, the millwork section of your hardware store, you can get pine in, in a whole bunch of different sizes and configurations, and you can put it together however you want. So whether you're replacing a top like I'm doing, or like, um, or the barn wood idea. Oh good, Marianne, thank you for telling me the video is coming through good. Okay. So this is why I split my piece into two. So I just put that top coat here um, and now we need to let it dry. So I'm gonna come over to this side now. This side already has my coat of voodoo gel stain and it already has my coat of gator hide dry on it. So now we're gonna work over here where it's nice and dry. And I'm gonna turn the camera so you guys can see this side better. See, this is why a cameraman is so, so, so nice. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna come over here to this section where it's dry and I'll show you what it, we did next. So the purpose of that gator hide is it seals off the wood and when we go through with our wood grading tool to rock it on, it's not gonna have the friction that the raw wood would have. So that little bit of gator hide allows your wood grading tool to rock and slide without getting caught up on the grain in your wood. It just, it just smoothed it out a little bit, so it took the friction away from that wood. So before I start adding, yeah, it's about $30 for this piece. This piece, again, is 72 inches long. It comes in two depths. So this is 20 inches wide, which I'm using for nightstands, but they also have 24 inches wide, which would be appropriate for a dresser. I'm gonna come through with the Dixie Bell sanding pad. Um, this is a 220 grit sandpaper. And all I'm using is to just take down any grit. Okay, so this is um, one coat of gel stain and then one coat of my gator hide on raw wood. So raw wood can take a few coats before you get rid of any grit. So that little light sanding just took it down and made it a little bit smoother. So then we're going to take two more of our Voodoo gel stains. The um, next two colors we're going to add on top of the gray base is going to be Voodoo gel stain in Tobacco Road, which is the brown, and then Black Magic, which is the black. So this is where I think if you wanted to add it in, I did not use it on the look that I gave you in the sample photos, but if you wanted to add it in, the White Magic would also be good. So I think we're going to try the White Magic on this one tonight too. Um, just to see how the white looks mixed in with it. So the only products I'm using are, are gel stains tonight, the Voodoo gel stains. But like I said, if you wanted to do this with paint, you could do a wash of Hurricane Gray. And then this would be the equivalent of caviar. And this would probably be the equivalent of chocolate. Dixie Bell chocolate and caviar. If you wanted to do this with paints instead of the Voodoo gel stains. This could be the equivalent of cotton. So just whatever I'm using these for, you could replace them with your paints instead. I have not tried that, but I don't see why you could not. So when you order the wood graining tool, which will be available on the Dixville website on Monday, you guys. Monday is when all the new products come out on the Dixville website, the 24th. Um, and that includes the wood grain tool. It comes in three pieces. So it comes in this larger piece here. Um, and then it's got a handle on it, which you can pop this off. Let's see if I can pop it off on camera. There you go. So you can pop this off to where it's the handle and then this piece pops off. And then it comes with a smaller graining tool. So if you are graining on say thin wood planks or something, or you just want a thin plank look, this is a great, you just replace this onto your handle and you would use the smaller version. I'm gonna use the larger one tonight. 
So I'm gonna pop my handle back on. It's just plastic, it's got little tabs that pop into the handle. Okay, um, and then it also comes with this tool here, which is like, I would say this is like a cake spatula almost, like for decorating frosting on cakes. And this tool you would use to just slide through your paint or your stain, and it will create a tooth look. So this would be cool if you're doing like, um, the denim looks are really popular right now, and Dixville just came out with a denim um, gel stain, but you could drag this through your paint in a um, crisscross and create a denim look with some either blue paints or blue stains but it's got three different sizes of teeth that you can drag through your paint. And it gives like a strie effect. But I mean, you could do it in zigzags or however you wanted to drag that through. So you get all three of these pieces in the package. These come all three. Um, so what I did is I took my Voodoo's and I literally just poured them on like this, onto my wood in streaks alternating, oh, my top is a little bit clogged, hang on. Okay, I alternated the brown and the black. So that's the brown, that's the um, tobacco road. Now I'm coming back with the black magic and I'm gonna streak that in too. Whoa. So I've done this look here where I don't use the graining tool and I just streak in these voodoos and it gives the wood kind of an exotic look if you want to leave it like that. So now I'm going to come back with my Dixie Belle brush. This is the mini again. It's slightly damp. Hey Erin. Brandy has pretty, can you guys see my toes? Um, you guys, what's really hard is I always have kept my nails painted and when I started painting, if you, you guys know if you paint, keeping your nails nice is like, is super hard. And I still really like having pretty nails. I do them myself. Um, I have to keep them shorter now and it's harder to keep them painted. So I'm just brushing out. This is, I'm just brushing out the, um, the Voodoo Gel Stains. I'm using the same brush. I'm letting the black and the brown mix on my brush. Just getting good coverage over the top of that gray, but it's got the um, gator hide over it. So that um, the up and smoke gel stain is all sealed. Um, if you guys missed this or you're popping in late tonight, this video will be available on my YouTube channel. Um, if you go to YouTube and search Brushed by Brainy, I've got a YouTube channel. All my videos are organized on there with um, titles that include the content um, and they're on there whether they're on the Dixie Belle page or the redesign with Prima page I organize them all into my YouTube channel later so sometimes it can take me a few days to get them uploaded but I always put them up on there okay so I brushed it all out um, this is a pretty look too if you wanted to stop at this point I think this is a pretty look too um, I've done this over tops where I alternate the gel stains and it just looks like it's got darker wood grain in some areas and lighter in others. That's not good enough for us tonight. So I'm gonna take my wood graining tool and it rocks on here. So you can pop it to however you like. And I'm gonna start sliding it across my gel stains. So I'll come, where's a good spot you guys can see? Okay, so with some pressure on your graining tool, you're gonna take it and start at one end of your wood and you're gonna start pulling. While you're pulling, you wanna rock your graining tool. Can you see how it starts creating the knots in the wood? Let's see, do you guys wanna be down a little lower so you can see that better? I bet you guys wanna see it better. So I'm gonna bring you in closer. Again, I don't have a cameraman tonight and I apologize. And let's get to, okay. Okay, there we go. So then I'm gonna to come to the other side of my piece of wood and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna apply some pressure, pull and rock. Okay, and then I'm gonna to come to this side again and do the same thing, pull and rock. 
and you don't want them to be the same. You want it to look like varied planks. So I want my knots to be in different spots, which all has to do with how you're rocking it. The speed that you're pulling and how you rock the tool. So what I'm getting here is I'm getting, you guys are closer. Um, I'm getting some, I really want you guys to see this and I, I'm so sorry I don't have a camera person to adjust this for me. Okay, let's see if that's better. Yeah, there you go. Now you can see the detail that that wood graining tool gives. Um, by pull, just the pulling and the rocking. So you you can see the gray that's underneath, that's our gray voodoo. And then it's rocking through the black and the brown. So I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna do this entire plank. The voodoo gel stain has a little bit more play time than the Dixie Belle paints do. So if you were doing this with paint, your paint might start setting up and you would not have as much time to leave it sitting out there as you do with the voodoos. Okay, so once I've rocked across my entire plank, I wanna let this kinda of hang out for a minute. And I'm doing that because I wanna let it get tacky. It's working, yeah. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna talk and let this get a little tacky for just a few minutes, not too long at all. So the story of how this happened for me was I rocked that wood graining tool on and then I told you guys I don't really care for the look of faux wood grain. This was too artificial looking for me. I wanted something that looked a little bit more authentic. Um, I missed this spot over here. I'm going to come back and just rock my tool over it. Okay. So I feel like it's getting a little bit tacky, a little bit sticky. A quick note is you can set your graining tool aside, but do you see how it's the stains started to gather inside my tool? Um, if this dries in there, it's a pain in the butt to get off. So my recommendation, drop this into a bucket of water before you start moving on to the next step. So I'm gonna drop this into a bucket of water so it doesn't get stuck on there. Um, Sean Collinborn, thank you for saying it's gorgeous. That's my husband, you guys. What colors am I using? So we put on a base over here. This was the base of Voodoo Gel Stain and Up in Smoke. And then we added on top of it, Voodoo Gel Stain in Black Magic and Tobacco Road. So this, again, is a beautiful look. And if you wanted to leave it at this point, you definitely could. I didn't care for this. So I thought, oh, I'm gonna come back and wipe it off. So I took a wad of paper towels and I was trying to take it off to do something else, but I wiped through my wood grain with it a little bit tacky. And this just took down those lines of definition. If you look at real wood, the grain is a little bit smeared. It's never perfect. So for me, this just took down those lines of the grain and softened them, made it a little bit more organic looking. But this was the key for me, was wiping those lines back after the Voodoo Gel Stain got tacky. So I thought that that wipe through it just made it look, it softened all those lines in there. It smeared them a little bit, which is closer to what genuine aged wood would look like. So that was... <laughs> That was the series of mistakes that I made. It was, oh, I don't care for this grain, it's a, or this gray, it's a little too boring, what else do I add? So then I added my voodoos in the black and the brown, and then it looked a little artificial for me. So I tried to wipe it off. And then when I wiped it off, it really smeared it out, and I was like, that's how wood looks to me. Um, so that's how this all came together, was that series of accidents, and that's what Dixie Bell wants us to do they want us to play with the product so then i can tell you that this you know all that series of mistakes or things i wanted to fix ended up in this beautiful look so once this voodoo dries you can choose if you want to seal it or not um, i put several more coats of gator hide over the top of this um, and sealed it because they were going to be nightstand top 
yeah, thank you for my mistakes. You guys, I make a lot of mistakes and um, you know, being an expert in painting doesn't mean never making mistakes. It means that you know how to go back and fix them when you do. That's the only difference. So I make mistakes all the time. Um, I just am not afraid to make them anymore. And when I do, I just go back and try something new. I've got a piece sitting over here that was gorgeous and I ended up splattering stain on it. So now I'm playing around with a different look on it. it it's, it's all part of the process. We all make mistakes. So I just wanted to show you guys that. Um, I'll go through again what we used on this and then I'm gonna jump off. But I think that gives you guys um, an awesome option for how do you get these pine tops? A great accident, yep. I mean, most of my work is accidents. <laughs> most of my work is accidents. Whoops, it looks great. Um, can you do it without so many knots? Um, do you mean, if you, yeah, if you, however, how you rock the tool is what creates the knot. So if you want less knots, where's my tool? I put it in the water. So when you rock the tool, you'll figure it out. You can do a little test board, but it's got a little circle down here. This is where the knots are made. So if you just focus it more on one side of the tool, you know, your rock is a little elongated, you're not gonna get as many knots. So play around with it on like a sample board or a test board and rock that tool and see what gives you, if you want more knots, focus on this end of the tool. If you want less knots, focus on this end of the tool. And that will, that will change it. <laughs> I like that sign, Rebecca. That's really cute. Really cute. Um, so again, the products that we used were a base of Voodoo Gel Stain in Up and Smoke was the, was the gray base. Then we put Gator Hide over the top and we streaked in. I told you guys we were going to use the White Magic, but we didn't. Should I add White Magic over the top? We could try it. Might be another happy accident. Who knows? So then we streaked in Tobacco Road and Black Magic and then ran the grain, graining, through, graining tool through it. I am gonna go ahead and play around with the white magic. Let's add some white in here, guys. Let me back you up again so you can see better. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take, um, I'm gonna get my graining tool out of the water and just get some of this gel stain off. So what I would have done to add the white in was when I was streaking them in, squirting them out of the bottle, I just would have squirted the brown, then the black, then the white, then brown, then black, then white, you know, and I would have alternated it and just included the white in there. But right now I'm gonna try it over the top and I'm just gonna add a few squirts of the white. And then we'll just run the graining tool through just those. So let me get my this would also be a great way if you've got spots that you don't care for, like you want to touch them up, to just put on a little bit more gel stain and rock your tool through them. I don't know if this is going to work. I've never done it before, but I'm going to try it. So now I'm going to take my tool and where I just applied the white, I'm going to rock through those. It's kind of cool. It's a little too streaky. I probably need to brush that white out a little bit more. Let's try that. Let's see if that looks any better. So definitely alternating it in with my brown and black would have been ideal if you wanted the white in there. You know what we can do? I can come over to the other side and try it because that's all dry now. Let's do that because this isn't working good. Don't do it this way. Oh, that's kind of cool. Don't do it this way. This is just a little bit more ab abstract, I guess. not terrible I just don't care for that streaky look in fact I'm gonna take it out I don't want it to set up um, if you want to reactivate your booted gel stain put some water on it brush it back out it's a water-based product so this is the point like if you're in a project and you got a look and you don't like it this is where you would be brushing it back out again
it's pretty with the white streaked in there. It's much lighter, you know, maybe for a more beachy feel. So now I could come rock my graining tool now that I've brushed all my wood grain out basically. So I rocked it that direction. Now I'll come back and rock it this direction. I really like the knots. So I'm gonna, I kind of have been focusing on the bottom of the tool where the knots are. The white is very, very, very pretty mixed in with it. It's much um, lighter. They don't have to be perfectly straight lines because when you look at a piece of wood, the grain is um, if you really want to get a natural look, wood grain is very imperfect. All right, I like that. I'm going to let it set up and get tacky and then we'll wipe through it. But in the meantime, I'll come over here and we'll do all three colors mixed on this side. So let me move all my stuff. Okay, so this is how I would have done it if I wanted to add the white in in the first place. My laptop shut down. I'm trying to read questions. Of course, of course it shut down. Okay. Oh yeah, you like that with the white. Okay. So I would have done it where I squirted in the tobacco road. I'll just leave a little more space in between it. And then I would squirt in the black magic. And then I would square in the white magic. Black magic and white magic, you get it? The good versus evil, use the force. So random order, they don't have to be you know, alternating or anything like that, but I would streak them all in together. And then same as we did before, I would come back and brush it all together. I like how this mixes the colors better than how it was over here when we added the white after the fact. This is, I think this would work much better. In theory, we'll soon find out, I guess, huh? I probably have, I have more stain on this time than I did last time. Probably a little over applied. I could have um, put more space in between those lines. Say that three times fast. <laughs> Tobacco road, black magic, white magic. Okay. So now that I've got all of those colors in, my tool has all this stain in it. I'm going to wipe it out a little bit. I let it dry in here the first time and uh, it got a little sticky. So all I did to clean this is I took a toothbrush, um, Sean's toothbrush, and I brushed it into the grooves and it just cleaned out that gel stain really quickly. Yeah, it is a little bit more farmhouse with the white. So now that I've got those all streaked together, I'm going to come in here and same thing. I'm going to pull and rock. And then come to the other side and pull and rock. And you're going to get some, like I really like that stripe right there. That one came out super good. And I'll come to this side and pull and rock. Some you'll like better than others, you know, it'll have a better knot or, you know, you stopped too soon and had to start again or whatever, but that's the organic look of wood. These stains are in my way. Um, I like this over the raw pine because when I wipe it back, not only do I get the look of the voodoo gel stains, but I also get a little bit of the original pine knots show through and some of the holes that are in the pine, you know, where the knots were. So that's really cool. I'm gonna throw my tool into the water again so it doesn't start setting up. Yeah, exactly. So Sean's missing the show tonight, but I think he might be watching in his car on the way home. <laughs> Poor Sean. 
You guys, I love having Sean here with me. It's really hard to do this without him. I'm letting this set up for a minute, get a little tacky like it did before. I'm gonna make sure I throw my brushes into the water. And this is the part where I let it set up and get tacky a little bit. And then I'm gonna wipe through it with that paper towel again to smear all the green in here. I'm gonna bring you guys in. Lower the camera down a little bit. And hopefully you'll be able to see it better. How's that look? Oh yeah, there you go. You guys can see that good. Okay, so ignore this tape line here. Um, Yeah, ignore the tape line over here because that part, I'll be pulling the tape up. So I feel like it's a little bit tacky now. I don't want it to, to let it get too tacky, but now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna wipe it off. Eh, probably a little too soon because that wiped away my wood grain and I don't want that. But that's okay because then I can just come back with my tool again and I can rock it back through. See, this is the series of experiments. That's how you figure out what works and what doesn't. So I wanna let this set up a little bit before I wipe through it with the paper towel. Should've brought my hair dryer over here. You're confused. Um, Rachel, we're just trying a whole bunch of different things with the Dixie Bell wood graining tool. So I showed you on the other side over here what I did and now we're just experimenting, playing with, with adding the white into it as well. So we rocked the tool through it and now I'm letting it set up a little bit and I'm gonna wipe it back. Um, watch the video back from the beginning. You like the white in it? Yeah, watch the video back from the beginning if you're um, afraid, but honestly, this is good time to just like experiment and you guys can see how some different looks look. You could leave the white out completely. Where did I get this tool? So this is part of the new Dixie Bell release. Um, on Monday, they will have a variety of new products available online. And um, if you guys go online now, you can look for a Dixie Bell retailer in your area. And a lot of them have the products in stock already. The premier retailers have them in stock already. Too much black, you think we have too much black? So let's try wiping through it again. It sets up pretty quickly. So I can come back and rock through this. I just wiped it back a little bit and I can come back and rock through it again. I don't want it to be so streaky. That's the artificial look that gets me with wood graining tools. I don't like the artificial look. I think this is because I got too much of the gel stain on here. Let's try if I wipe it back and then rock through it again. That's a little bit more authentic looking to me. Yeah, Mary Jo, this will be available. Can you lift the camera up so we can see it all? Yeah. So we've done a couple different experiments. We've done, we've added the white voodoo gel stain. We've done it with just the black and the brown over the gray. This was streaking in. Let me take this tape off because I feel like it's a little confusing. This side was streaking in the white before we rocked the tool. This was adding it afterwards. This side is drying actually really, really cool. I actually think I prefer this side. So all I would do to make a match is I'm gonna come brush this out a little bit more. My brush is wet, something I don't care for. So I just change it. So I brushed it all out again. And now I can come rock my tool back through it. Yeah, this looks way better. I just had way too much stain on this side. I'm gonna bring you guys back over here. So I brushed it all out with a wet brush and now I'm going back through it with the graining tool. It softened it. 
It looks much more natural. I just had way too much stain on this side. So I think this is going to dry and be much, much better. You like the first one better? Yeah, so that was funny because that was an accident too. Like we just, you know, put the white in over the top of the black and the brown and then brushed it out. And it ended up with this really cool look. So don't be afraid to play because if you don't like how it's looking, then you just take a wet brush and then um, rebrush it out and you can come back and run the graining tool through it again. So I think that's a really cool way to use the new graining tool. And then we used four colors of Voodoo gel stain tonight. So we used Tobacco Road, Up in Smoke, White Magic and Black Magic tonight. The White Magic and the Graining Tool will be available on the Dixieville website as of Monday, and it's with our premier retailers um, today. If you guys wanna look them up and see if you can go this weekend and find any that have it in stock. Um, if you're a retailer and you're watching, let, uh, let people know that you've got them already. Feel free to put your information on there, and if you see a retailer that's near you, go grab one this weekend. Let's see, did I miss any questions? Okay, so yeah, I mean, if, if one side you don't care for the white or you like one side better than the other, you know, just play around with your graining tool. Mix the colors, if you don't like one, brush it back out with a wet brush and run your tool through it again. Um, but I think they're both really pretty. They're just slightly different than each other. And, um, I have some really cool options. So that's just a plain pink plank of pine. And then all I did to attach this to my piece, I used a, used a Dixie Belle paint container. And if you take it on the corner, it'll give you a radius. And you can cut off the corner. So you've got a rounded corner on your top. So cut that off. And then um, same way we attach or we unattach the old tops, we came through and screwed these new pine tops in up from the bottom. So we just um, took a screw gun and ran screws up underneath the bottom along with a bead of liquid nail around the outside of the frame. So it was attached by glue and by nails to the new top. Be careful with it because with a new top they will be fragile until all that dries. Um, Jamie, let's see. Oh, Jane, I'm sorry. Jane is a retailer that's got the new products in stock. Yes, you guys, please go look at um, who our retailers are who have the products in stock and hit them up this weekend so you guys can play around. But thank you guys. I'm gonna get off camera. If you guys can see me. I'm gonna get off camera. My name's Brandy. I'm with Fresh by Brandy. Go follow my page if you wanna see what a finished piece with this look on the tops looks like. I posted them today. Um, and I'm on Facebook and YouTube. I also have a website and you guys I'm going to be teaching Dixieville has two conferences going on one in Southern California in Ontario, California um, September 28th and 29th with Prima redesign with Prima products um, They've partnered up to put on a two-day conference in Southern California And there's also the bells and bow tour in New Jersey on November 3rd that I'm going to be teaching at so a few options um, if you guys want to learn in person from some teachers like me and some other um, Dixieville brand ambassadors, then check those out. Thank you, Tish. Have a great night, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. I miss Sean. Me and Sean will be back next week at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, and I don't know what we're going to do yet. It's going to be a surprise. So I'll let you guys go. Thank you, Bev. Thank you, everyone, for watching Vintage Finders Warehouse. Thank you, guys. I'll see you guys later.